This is a fully automatic rubber band machine gun. By fully automatic I mean that this rubber band gun has a mechanism which is driven by energy derived from the same source as that which provides the energies to propel the projectiles. That is to say the potential energy present in these stretched rubber bands that are loaded onto the gun's mechanism. I am unaware of any other designs in the world at present which are both rapid fire and which do not require a power source external to the gun, that is to say a motor or some sort of a manual energy input device necessary to drive the mechanism of the gun. It may be that other such designs do exist but I have myself have not seen them. I'm placing this design out there in the public domain so that people can uh, see that it is indeed possible and um, be aware that it doesn't necessarily need to be um, extremely complex. In this video I'm going to demonstrate um, how to load this gun and demonstrate firing it of course. Um, and I will try to um, provide a little bit of insight into um, exactly how the mechanism works. I have submitted a patent application for this design um, and I'm hoping to be able to manufacture it and um, make it available to the public. Here's a, a few different views of the gun. This area here is the barrel assembly. Um, there's a frame assembly. Um, the barrel is made up of a total of 12 barrel sub-assemblies. The design doesn't depend on there being 12. There could be more or less. Um, underneath the barrel assembly, this copper tube is part of the um, deflection sub-assembly. Um, the way that the rubber band gun works is that um, this barrel assembly um, rotates relative to the frame assembly and its rotation is caused by each of these um, firing pins rotating a half turn or 180 degrees through this shaped deflection channel. Um, as each, each of the firing pins passes through the channel, it causes the barrel assembly to rotate relative to the frame assembly um, by a, an amount sufficient that um, the next firing pin in line will come into position over the deflection channel and fall in. Um, the trigger um, sub-assembly here effectively, well, while the trigger, when the trigger is not engaged, it's in a forward position and it um, causes the back ends of the firing pins to be depressed. Um, this results in the front end lifting up and the firing pin skipping over um, the deflection channel, so firing pins don't, do not turn into the channel. Um, each firing pin is cocked and then a rubber band is loaded onto it, um, then it's cocked again and another rubber band is loaded onto it, and that process is repeated several times until uh, multiple rubber bands are loaded onto each of the firing pins. Um, each, each rubber band are, is released um, following a 180 degree turn of, um, of a firing pin and um, a small portion of the energy in that stretched rubber band of course goes into turning the firing pin and causing the mechanism to rotate. Um, the steepest part of the angle in the deflection channel is in the middle where this lever arm uh, each of the each of the firing pins is a lever arm where it's shortest and it's able to apply the most leverage to turn the mechanism and to overcome the friction from the tips of the remaining firing pins as they ride on the surface of the deflection um, structure sub assembly. So I've caught each firing pin a half turn. I'm going to load a rubber band onto each. Let's see slide it back here so that you can see the 
that at the front of the gun I'm hooking the rubber bands over the ends of the um, oh, I don't, I'm not sure what I was calling those here in the middle section I'm hooking the rubber bands here over the the point in the center of the firing pin. Um, I should say that what you can see here on the gun, this um, fine thread and these rubber bands that we're here to begin with, um, that's part of a mechanism to keep the firing pins level um, relative to the to the gun when there's no rubber bands um, present in the mechanism. Um, this prevents the firing pins from um, rotating um, freely into the the deflection channel while the, the barrel assembly is turning, which would happen um, potentially near the end of the, you know, once once the rubber band supply is exhausted. Um, if they were to rotate freely in there out of sequence with um, the firing sequence, it could cause damage. The mechanism effectively could self-destruct. Um, so the, that's what these, these tethers here are for. Go ahead and try to finish loading it. As with all rubber band guns, well, not all of them. I'm sure there's the potential out there, but um, as with the ones that I'm aware of, uh, it takes a little while to load. So I'm stretching a single rubber band on each firing pin. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and caulk each pin again. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and load another rubber band onto each firing pin each barrel of the or barrel sub-assembly of the um, barrel assembly. I've had to come up with um, names for the parts of the rubber band gun and in order to um, complete the patent application that I submitted. It was a challenge to describe many of the, the features. I attempted to describe them as being analogous to uh, um, parts of an actual um, firearm when possible. But of course, there are some parts here that don't have any equivalent. Um, so I had to be creative. There's two rubber bands loaded onto each each barrel subassembly now. Um, total of 24 on the gun now. That there being that there's 12 barrel subassemblies. Go ahead and talk it again. Talk each in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and load a total of 36 on, so another rubber band on each barrel subassembly. And I don't know that anybody else out there in YouTube world will actually show you this many rubber bands being loaded. It's always going to be fast forwarded, I guess just have important things to say though. Let's see here. One might be tempted to load multiple rubber bands onto each barrel subassembly per turn. I don't see any point. Um, a rapid fire rubber band shotgun or scatter gun, mm, that would be nice, but that is not what this design is. So the mechanism now has a total of 36 rubber bands. I've loaded as so for this first go around, I'm going to go ahead and um, fire the gun um, here, sitting in a stationary position on the table. Whoops! Um, I'm going to do that just so that um, the mechanism can be observed. Not sure what's going to get picked up here by the camera because um, the gun develops a high rate of fire, um, similar to a minigun and things move quickly and it could be that the rotation that you saw in reverse when I was cocking it of each firing pin isn't going to be real obvious. Um, so let's see here. You can see that I've got my thumb here on the um, trigger and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate firing it again here in more of a um, combat stance so to speak but Let's take a look here. Um, okay, there was a few rubber bands. I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger again. Well, looks like I shot off most of them already. As you can see here, um, 
One of the limitations of the design as it exists currently is that the mechanism or the barrel assembly tends to over rotate even after the trigger is released which means that um, the rubber bands aren't necessarily fired in sequence. Um, I'm going to be working on a, <clears throat> a dampening system or a velocity limiting system um, making use of some sort of visco viscous fluid or air um, which I'm hoping will be able to um, slow the rate of fire um, so that over rotation doesn't occur. I'll go ahead and fire off the remaining rubber bands though here. So that was 36 rubber bands. I'll go ahead and load it up again so that um, we can actually get a full view of what's happening. Okay, so here we are again now with 48 rubber bands loaded onto the mechanism. Um, I should say these are size 32 rubber bands. I'm going to go ahead and fire some short bursts here. Um, we can hopefully get a, a good effect what's going on here. So there were short bursts, fast on the trigger some over rotation but most firing pins still have several rubber bands loaded onto them. Go ahead and fire off some more here. Go ahead and empty it. So, that is a true fully automatic rubber band machine gun.